So this video is demonstrating the change in mucosa from the stomach to the small intestine. In this area, again, we've got our mucosa extending to the muscularis mucosa here, a submucosa, and then our muscle layer surrounded at this point by a serosa. Let's have a closer look at the epithelium. Again, we can see on the epithelium uh, some columnar epithelial cells. The nucleus is just here. The tall cells with pale pink staining um, cytoplasm. These are the mucus producing cells lining the stomach. And then they dip into the stomach glands or pits. Um, and these are cross sections of the pits showing the various cell types that make up the pits. For example, the cells that secrete acid so that was the stomach epithelium. Let's follow it all the way along until we get to the junction here. And there's a change then in epithelium just at this point. And we get a different sort of mucosal structure here where we can see these long finger-like projections poking into the lumen. These are the villi of the small intestine. So these are folds of mucosa. So in this particular villus we can see this got there is um, a lamina propria up the center uh, the basement membrane would be here you can see the nuclei of the cells here again they're tall columnar cells and there's something fuzzy at the apical surface of the cells you can't reveal any further detail of them in light microscopy but in electron microscopy, you would be able to see that those are small folds in the apical surface membrane of the cells called microvilli. And the microvilli are a way of increasing the surface area of the cells to enable them to absorb the nutrients from the food that is passing through the lumen. So both the ultrastructural surface features, the microvilli, on the surface of these tall columnar cells, which are called enterocytes, and the bigger folds, which are the finger-like projections of the mucosa, making up the villi, together increase the surface area of the small intestine for absorption, and maximize the contact of the food with the cells as it passes through. Aside from the enterocytes lining this villus, we can also see other cell types. This one here, a sort of squash nucleus at the bottom, and then a big goblet shaped surface uh, upper upper part and another one here big round surface kind of bubbly looking on the inside and another one here these are all goblet cells and these produce mucus um, in order to lubricate the passage of food through the intestine there are other cell types in here as well there are interepithelial lymphocytes which recognize antigens we zoom back out again hopefully you can see now the mucosal folds as the villi poking up but at the base of the villi as well there are crypts crypts of Lieberkuhn and they dip down in deep and these are the source of stem cells which give rise to the cell the enterocytes and the, and the goblet cells and all the other cell types in the villus and um, they, they migrate up the villus and they're shed from the villus tip every two or three days and also down in the bottom here, you'll find panath cells, which are involved in producing defensins. So between the stem cells, the goblet cells, the enterocytes, the panath cells, and some enteroendocrine cells as well, there are quite a variety of different epithelial cell types in the small intestine. So zooming back out, we can see quite a difference between the glandular structure of the epithelium in the stomach with the pits containing the acid producing and other enzyme producing cells, the mucus layer, uh, the mucus producing layer at the top, to a, quite a different set of circumstances here in the small intestine where we have lots of folded villi which on their surface contain enterocytes with microvilli all to extend the surface area by a large order of magnitude to facilitate absorption of food. So we've gone from mechanical and enzymatic breakdown here to absorption and digestion here.